Hello, I'm back. Um, this is the long awaited video on soaking willow for basket making. Today, let's just dive in and um, talk about all things soaking and preparing willow for basket making. This is going to be a slightly longer kind of sit down video. Um, I have a lot of topics to uh, go through, but what I will do is I'll put timestamps uh, in the description of the video below so you can search by um, headings, uh, the content of what I'll be discussing so you can skip ahead if, you, if there's parts that you're not interested in, okay? Um, first I want to talk about um, different willow types so that we all know what we're talking about when I say those terms. So there's basically four kinds of willow that you can weave with. Uh, first one is buff willow. Buff willow has uh, is willow that has been boiled for hours and then stripped of its bark. It has kind of a brownie color and it needs a lot less soaking time. Buff willow can also be soaked and uh, dried out and soaked and dried out again and again. Well, not endlessly, but for a few times. Buff willow needs only about half an hour per foot to soak. Then there's also white willow. White willow is willow that has also been stripped of its bark, but not by boiling, but by um, keeping the rods alive, that when in spring the, stop, the sap starts rising, um, the bark kind of separates from the rod easily and stripping is done um, then. So the, so the bark comes off easily in spring. The rods are then left to dry out and then um, that is called white willow. White willow needs slightly more um, soaking time um, than uh, buff but it is very similar. I would still go with about half an hour per foot. Then we're talking about brown willow and brown willow is not called brown because of the color because it could be all different kinds of color but brown willow is kind of an arching term for all willow that has um, is completely dry um, and it still has the bark on it so willow that is completely dried out with the bark on it is called brown willow but of course it can be all different kinds of colors as you can see in some of my work um, depending on willow varieties um, but brown willow um, the general rule is that it needs to be soaked for one day per foot then you also have green willow green willow is basically fresh willow so willow that has not um, dried out fully you can weave with green willow the problem is that uh, willow has a high water content so when it dries all the rods are going to shrink quite considerably about 50 percent i think um, which might leave your basket wobbly well it most certainly will leave it wobbly and there might be gaps in the weaving there is a time that the willow has um, dried out a good bit before it is fully dry that you can use it uh, without it shrinking too much but that window is usually very short and it's very hard to say but um, go ahead and experiment and I usually say um, make sure that your willow is completely dry and then re-soak it just to kind of cut out um, that issue but um, for practice uh, for just um, practicing your techniques um, green willow is perfectly fine um, so it just um, that you know um, if you are using green willow that that is one of the consequences that things that might happen so just to go through the rules again buff is half an hour per foot white also about half an hour per foot brown willow needs to be soaked one day per foot now these are rules some varieties need longer soaking time and also it will depend on the weather and the water and all these kind of things um, you uh, i will go into later on in this video how do you know if your willow is ready i would say um, use the 90 degree rule 90 degree rule is where you bend your willow rod at 90 degree angles gently um, 
if the rod snaps and you actually hear the snap in the inside, it's not ready. If the bark um, breaks off completely, the rod is not ready either. If the bark just kind of slightly um, kind of rips, um, then your rods could be ready after mellowing or after um, steaming. So and it, the, when the bark just kind of just a little bit opens up, your rod is nearly ready, it's nearly there. And um, when it is fully ready, your rod should bend 90 degrees without snapping, without the a bark breaking. That kind of ideal situation is very hard uh, to learn at first and there's going to be mistakes, but um, you will get be better um, in time to do this. I just mentioned mellowing there. So what is mellowing and how long do you need to mellow? Mellowing is um, leaving your rods to stand for a certain time um, after soaking that um, it gives the rods time to really soak up the last bit of moisture from their uh, bark and make the makes the um, it makes the bark extra um, leathery and pliable so if you take your rods out of the tank and start using them straight away um, even though they might be soaked and they might be fine to use um, after mellowing they'd be even better also if your rods are nearly ready and you let them mellow um, it will make sure that they are fully ready afterwards I usually take my rods out in the evening and then let them mellow overnight um, depending on the weather if it is very um, damp and cold I just might wrap them in a sheet and let them stand for the night if it is very dry and warm I would also wrap them in a sheet and um, some plastic to stop them drying out too quickly once um, that sorry that mellowing frame can be um, dragged out a little bit you can leave them to mellow for a day even two days um, that would be fine when they're wrapped up would be fine so mellowing is a step that's often forgotten about um, at the start so when you are calculating your time that the willow needs to be in the tank and then the time you 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 will also have to figure in that mellowing time or just do it overnight as I said I usually do. Um, I have had the question do, do I need to uh, mellow my rods after steaming? No, after steaming um, I do leave my rods cool down slowly. I wouldn't weave with them hot. I usually let them stand overnight to let them cool down but that is not necessary. It's just to give that an extra little bit. Um, but after steaming um, you don't need to leave your rods mellow anymore. So let's talk about soaking tanks and different options there are. You can do anything and everything as long as the willow is completely submerged in water. It can be running water, it can be stagnant water, any water will do. So let's talk about soaking tanks and different soaking options that I know work and I've seen people use. Um, the most common one is soaking bags you can actually buy them as a soaking bag or any other sturdy plastic bag um, you can tie them and then put them down on the ground um, and and they work uh, if you only are soaking small quantities of course there's animal troughs uh, water tanks boats canoes or kayaks um, a hole dug into the ground and lined with plastic or a frame made out of timber or stones and then lined with plastic that can work too. A stream, a pond, an old bath, um, uh, pipes, those big plastic pipes, uh, sewage pipes. You can buy um, kind of lids for them or things that close it off. If you then um, glue the lid on and put it upside down that works too. The only thing you need to 
make sure that you know is that willow will float to the top so we'll need some kind of weight to keep it down in the water next thing i want to talk about water temperature so willow soaks faster in warmer water so that means that in summer your willow will um, soak slightly um, faster and that in winter your willow will need more time in a tank if you are in a very cold climate and your water will go near freezing temperatures um, you can pretty much forget about soaking um, what I know some people do is put in a heating element and make sure that the water kind of stays warm uh, or um, move the water um, in your tank into a garage or something so the water temperature is um, a pretty important part of the soaking process um, I know that some people use warmer water to speed up that process so going even further than let's say 20 degrees you can bring it up to um, 40, 50 or 60 degrees and even make the soaking pro process go even faster. Um, the only thing with that is that the willow will change color slightly so if you are using um, if you are using a very nice color and you don't want it to change i wouldn't go there so that is another option you can play with you can speed up the process by using warm water and in winter if you ha are in a very cold climate you will have to um, stop soaking or find a, a, a way of heating up that water let's talk about steaming so um Steaming is an optional step in the whole um, preparing willow for basket making kind of process. Um, for years I didn't steam my willow at all. Um, but steaming uh, makes willow this extra little bit um, more usable, a little bit more flexible. And it also makes the willow keep for longer. So that means that I can keep my willow for two or three weeks after steaming, um, wrapped up of course, and um, being gentle that it doesn't dry out too soon, um, without it going too dry. So the willow, would, the willow would only stay at the very best condition for one or two days. So steaming kind of drags that um, out a little bit and makes it a lot easier to work as well but as I said it's an optional step how long do I steam um, that is what I I steam for um, about three or four hours but my steaming trough is quite big if you want to have a look at it um, I think I have a video about my steaming process and I link it um, in the video somewhere um, so my trough is quite big so um, if, to heat all that up it takes a bit of time and um, so for me it would be three or four hours depending on size if the willow is thicker it definitely will need four hours if it, I'm steaming just thinner uh, stuff three hours would do fine if you are steaming in a smaller bag or a smaller container um, an hour could be enough um, of steaming so you'll have to experiment a little bit there yourself. Um, once the willow is steamed, I just let it cool down very slowly. I find that that helps instead of just taking it out straight away and letting it dry out. So the, the kind of the slowly cooling down period after steaming helps um, to bring out those oils and um, make the willow extra mellow. How long can I keep my willow after soaking? I can't really put uh, a time frame on it. So that really depends on the climate where you live, whether it's hot or cold or dry or hu humid. Um, what I w would, you know, if, if the climate, if the weather, let's say, is very hot and dry, that time frame can only be, maybe it's probably a few days. Um, if it is cold, and damp um, you can you can keep your willow for a good probably a few weeks if you mind it you wrap it up um, and keep an eye on it um, it could be extended so um, 
there is no real time frame that I can say um, that works for every single one. It will be different according to your situation. Uh, what I would say, keep an eye on your willow. Um, eventually you will get to know it and see when it is drying out a little bit. Um, when you feel your willow is drying out a little bit and you are still going to be able to use it in the next couple of days, um, I do um, a process that I call topping up. It is just, um, I might just put it back in the tank overnight or if I feel it has dried out quite a bit, I might leave it in for a day, maybe a day and a half. And then again, mellow it and then use it. Um, as long as your willow doesn't dry out completely and then um, you can't re-soak it again. You can also use steaming to top up your um, willow again. So if you feel your willow is going dry a little bit and it hasn't been steamed yet, you can steam it to make it um, pliable again. Um, make sure that you don't let your willow dry out completely. Um, I have found, and I know a lot of people are the same, that once your willow has dried out fully and you can't really soak it again. Well, in that you can soak it again, but um, the bark will go um, very soft and will come off easily. And also it will never regain it full, its full flexibility that it had beforehand. So that willow really is, um, is not usable anymore. Unless it is for, you know, small outdoor projects or whatever. Um, but not for a basket because it will start breaking in all the wrong places that you don't want it to. There is such a thing as over soaking though. So we did discuss um, how long to soak kind of the rules and how to check your willow to see is it um, ready. Um, there is such a thing as leaving it in the water for too long. What will happen with brown willow is the um, the bark will go soft and will come off very easily when you're weaving. and um, Or if you leave it very long, it will go slimy and rotten and stuff like that. So you can't leave it in that long. For buff, um, when you leave buff in too long, um, it starts getting brittle and breaks easily. And um, lastly, a few people have asked me about mold. Um, yes, mold is a regular thing in willow. So what you are trying to do when, when we are soaking our willow, we are trying to keep uh, willow wet and damp for as long as possible so we can keep using it. With everything that is kept uh, kind of damp, um, eventually you will get molds and stuff going in there. Um, the way to prevent it is to, of course, use your willow as quickly as possible and don't um, try not to wrap your willow in plastic unless it is very dry outside and it will dry out too quickly. So leaving something that is very wet wrapped in plastic will make sure that molds are in there in a very short period of time. Um, so that is something to keep at the back of your mind. That will happen at some stage. It still happens to me sometimes. And um, that is just part of the learning process. Mold can also come onto willow that is dry sometimes. I've actually not seen it on my own willow, but I have seen it on other willow and it is, um, if it is kind of a grey mould, um, it usually is um, mould that comes on when the weather is very damp um, or when your willow is, has been completely dried out and then kind of you, you get a, a damper period maybe in winter time and um, the air moisture is higher than the willow, than the moisture in the willow, this kind of grey mold can come onto your willow. Usually it is, um, it's perfectly fine. It doesn't damage um, the bark. And once you soak the willow, that mold just comes off. That's just something else I wanted to touch on. So just to recap, and I just want to give you a timeline of 
uh, soaking and how to prepare your willow. I just gave you loads of information. Um, I hope this is helpful and it, I'm sorry if it is overwhelming because it is a lot to learn as a beginner. But just to kind of bring you through the timeline of willow. So um, if you grow your own willow, you're going to harvest it in the winter time and then leave it to dry out. If you want to practice, you can practice with green willow, but I would recommend you leave it to dry out and then we're going to soak it. When you buy in willow, your willow will be dry usually. Um, when you buy it. Then you're going to make sure that you're looking at the right kind of willow. Is it buff? Is it white? Is it brown? Um, maybe what variety it is as well. And then you're going to soak it for brown willow. It's a day per foot. Buff and white half an hour per foot. Leave it in the water after um, roughly the time that you know the willow might be ready you're going to start checking it with a 90 degree bend rule and try and figure out is it is it ready or not. If it is ready, you feel it is ready, um, you're going to mellow the willow overnight or for another day. Um, if you want, you can also steam the willow as an extra top off. I just gave you loads of information. I hope I didn't, you know, overload you, but um, what you will find is that you're not just learning about how to make a basket, you're also learning about how to respond and listen to the willow because every kind of willow is going to be different. My willow will grow different here than your willow will be. So you, you have to start um, picking up on little clues and um, just kind of get a feel of what good soaked willow looks like to use. And that just comes with time and practice. And I can, I can tell you these things, but you will still have to do it yourself. So um, thanks so much for watching. I'm really grateful for you are here and you want to learn about basket making. And if you have any questions, leave them underneath the video or um, ask them somewhere else on our Facebook, Facebook group or wherever. And I would love to help you out. Okay, everyone, um, thank you so much and chat to you soon. Take care. Bye.